Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Collector's Edition 101. Class is now in session. So, we have another exciting unboxing video here today. We have a massive, and I mean massive box of graded cards. So, without any further ado, we're gonna just gonna cut right back into this bad boy. Let's see what goodies we got today. I'll be honest, I haven't looked at the invoice for this because I do love a good surprise. I kind of have a rough idea of what this one should be, but sorry about that little camera jiggle. This box is a lot heftier than I thought. Don't want to see that. So we got one, two, three, and four massive boxes here. So we're going to start uh, trying to get these guys all in view. That was number four. This was number three. This was number two. And this was number one. They labeled them for us. Make it nice and easy. So we're going to start at the end here with number four. Crack this bad boy open. So, thankfully this box is looking a lot better than one of the last ones we got in. It looked pretty uh, banged up in all honesty. Ooh, hello. Bubble wrap. Oh, nope. Had the cards facing the wrong way. I almost got a sneak preview. So, this grouping came back from CGC. So we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. We got a lot to uh, check out and talk about today. So let's move on with the first card. Straight from CGC, we have Brock's Grits Evolutions 8.5. No subgrades on this batch of cards. There's a couple here and there that might have some subgrades if I remember correctly. Um, however, looking at the card itself, I think this is one of the first recent appearances of Brock on actually one of the cards um, in his own full art trainer. Beautiful card. Very, very cool looking. Man, they did him good with that gold border. Next up, Dark Slowbro. Team Rocket Unlimited Non-Foil. Comes in at a near mint 8. Another fantastic card from those early Team Rocket days. Very, very simple background, which I love. Doesn't take away from Slowbro himself. A little bit of Team Rock baddie action in the background there. Overall, super dope card. Moving on to the next card. Dark Magneton. This is by far my favorite foil from Team Rocket. Just because of the simplicity, the amount of shine. So many awesome swirls. It's got a little swirly in it too. So exciting. Oh man, just I could stare at this foil all day. Not gonna lie, if I could even get this foil and put it as a wallpaper in my house, oh man, my future spouse would definitely kill me. Let's see, next up, Dark Machamp, Team Rocket, Unlimited 7.5. Another fantastic card. Uh, I wish I could give more information as to the playability of some of these cards back in that Team Rocket era. But again, I said in a previous video that I unfortunately did not play in the Team Rocket era uh, myself. So I am unfamiliar with what the meta was, what were the top decks people were playing. I was mainly just a collector at that point in time. So, coming up next, another Team Rocket. We got a Nearman 8 Dark Vile Plume. Again, in that beautiful non-foil. Man. Hay Fever. No trainer cards can be played. This power stops while Dark Vile Plume is asleep, confused, or paralyzed. Seems like a typical Vile Plume style effect. I know that no trainer cards has been a Vile Plume ability for many, many years. Moving on to the next one. 
Hey, a little bit of new action here. Darkrai EX, Black Star promo from the legendary EX tins. Now, this is an era that I played. I played Darkrai Hydreigon in its early heydays when everyone thought that was going to be the next big thing. Realized Hydreigon was just a little too slow to the deck, so we just stuck with good old Darkrai EX and uh, Sableye. They got the job done, right? <clears throat> Moving on to the next. Dedene GX. Beautiful alternate art from the Trainer's Toolkit. Looks like he kind of smashed up against the card. He's got his little chubby cheeks uh, pressed up against the glass is what it reminds me of every single time. Which, when putting it in a slab, it's almost even funnier in my opinion. Love, 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 love that card. Ditto Prism from Lost Thunder. Lost Thunder has kind of been a bit of a sleeper set in my opinion. Um, not a lot of people were really big into it. It had a couple good cards here and there. But I've seen some traction in the marketplace lately for that set. It's been steadily climbing, especially some of the full art trainers from that set. Um, even then, little ditto. Can't forget about this guy. Super great Prism Star. You can basically treat him as a basic for any Pokemon you need it in your deck. I know a couple people that liked this guy in the deck instead of the normal Black Stars. Um, overall condition's not too bad. So far we're steady staying in those 7-8s, eight, 8-5 eight, range so far. <clears throat> Next card, EVGX, Tag Team Powers Collection. This guy is super cool. He's so joyful. Just those big brown eyes. Man, he looks adorable. Ascension DNA. Once during your turn before you attack, if you have a Pokemon in your hand that evolves from Eevee, you may put that card onto this Pokemon to evolve it before evolving. Heal all damage from this Pokemon. Pretty good. Um, I was not playing actively when this card is in the format. But man, that seems like it could be something that could be a little, a little powerful. Especially with my love for the Eevee decks. Moving on to our next card today. Speaking of Eevee. Man, Legendary Treasures. This is a gorgeous set. The Radiant Collection, they really outdid themselves. This is just like a type of foil that they really never had done before. Doing all these fancy designs and swirls and hearts and Pikachu faces. And the cards just, man, they really came to life. It really showed a side of Pokemon within the card game that it had never really experienced. Like, look at Eevee. He is so happy there, getting pets and loves and scritches from his trainer. Oh, he is so adorable. 10 out of 10. What on him, Eevee? Next up, speaking of Eevee, Sun and Moon Kanto Mini Pack Sequin Hollow. These guys are super cool. Kind of like all over. Looks like a bag of beads just spilled into that hologram, if I'm being honest. Um, this is a good Eevee. The energy evolution. Basically, you can attach an energy searcher deck for the appropriate evolution to the EV, um, and yeah, Evolve. It's a really good way to get the EVs that you needed very specifically for a deck, uh, especially once you knew what your opponent was playing. You could search out, you know, if you need Espeon to snipe something off their bench, or Jolteon because of weakness. Um, this EV worked in a pinch to snag any of those uh, that you needed. That's why I always love EVs. They're such a toolbox Pokemon, and EVs require a lot of skill to play, in my opinion. Moving on to our next card. It is a beautiful Jirachi from the Mystical Pokemon Collection. These guys came in the uh, little mini tin packs, I believe. You would get this promo, a pin, and a couple packs. If I remember correctly, I want to say it was Generations at the time. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. But it was around that same time, that Legendary Treasures, Radiant Collection, all that type of jazz. Um, this guy came back in a 6. Which... Man, that is weird. I don't know if you guys can see this on the camera here, but right here, yeah, pardon me, I'm looking back at the camera to make sure we're getting good focus on this. It almost looks like there's something in the case. What the heck? If that is why this thing got a six, I'm going to be a little upset at that. They couldn't just brush that off? I mean, come on. Anyway, we'll reflect on that one a little bit later. Moving on, Lickitung Jungle First Edition. Awesome card, came back in an 8. Again, simplicity. Simplicity, simplicity. I love simple artwork. And man, is this Lickitung getting himself a bunch of bananas. 
That's going to be a happy look at Tongue. Lugia EX from Plasma. Well, technically, Legendary Treasures, but this is the Team Plasma Lugia. Um, this guy was highly speculated to be pretty good back in the format. There were a couple decks that played him and utilized him pretty well, but I don't know. I, I just never liked him. Um, personal opinion, once again. Felt like he took a little bit to get set up. Um, it's nice to get that extra prize card, but... Mm. Gotta have the plasma energy, otherwise he didn't do anything. He's a good clean sweeper at the end if you could sneak him out there. Another Lugia EX. This is once again the good old X Ball Lugia. Um, kind of mimicking back to the Dark Rai with the uh, similar ability that the Mewtwo EX had. This one was Arrow Ball, just for DCE, basically the same thing. 20 damage times the number of entities attached to both active Pokemon. Don't think anyone really used it for Deep Hurricane, but Arrow Ball was definitely the big hitter on that guy. Magneton from Aquapolis, 5.5. Aquapolis is just one of those fantastic sets. Like, every card in that set has always got some sort of cool art or nostalgia for someone. Aquapolis, Sky Ridge, like, man, those are some of my favorite sets. <laughs> Neo Discovery, Magnemite, Near Mint 8. Um, this is another weird era of Pokemon that I actually wasn't actively playing the TCG, but I was collecting. Um, I kind of missed out on some of the good playable eras, in my opinion. I mean, don't be, get me wrong, I was pretty active in the 05 to like 08 or 09 era. Uh, I think I took 2010 off, and then I came back on around 2011, 2012, and kind of played out for a couple years. Um, only recently, once again, taking a break. I think I stopped playing right around... Oh, man. I, want to, I think I started stopped playing around the first Sword and Shield set. Just, I don't know. Collecting has been more fun for me most of the time. And we have an Orangaroo with a fuzzy on him. Let's get that little fuzzy out of there. Go away. Okay. Rangaroo from Hidden Fates, coming in with a Near Mint 9. Beautiful, beautiful card. I believe he was also another heavily played card. Um, not the shiny version per se, but some people like to upgrade their decks a bit. Um, mainly played for that Instruct, though once during your turn before you can tag, you can draw until you have three cards in your hand. Um, kind of a little budget shaman, but I mean you could do it every single turn, so that's kind of good. Doesn't even need to be your active. Next one, Tyranitar from Stormfront. Um, Reverse Hollow. Hmm. Correct me if I am wrong. But I don't know if this was the Reverse Hollow. Again, comment down below if uh, I'm just losing my mind. But I swore that... Was Stormfront one of those eras where they... I don't think there was... No, that was Heart Gold Soul Silver era that they did the naming. Hmm. I'm going to have to dig into this one because the picture is definitely hollow. It doesn't have the traditional trademark reverse hollows, but it doesn't also have the stamping, so maybe I'm just crazy on that one. I'm going to have to dig into that one. Lastly, Umbreon GX, once again with the Evolutions. Love me some Evolutions. Um, beautiful, beautiful card. I don't think this guy was used heavily in play. Um, discard two energies from your opponent's Pokemon. As a GX attack. Doesn't strike me as very good. Um, Sun and Moon base set. Yeah, I think this was just a cool collectible card. Definitely don't think this was heavily played. Um, but overall, the first box. Very exciting. All sorts of cards from all over. Um, we're going to shift those guys out of the way. And we're going to move into box three. Oh, goodness. Okay. Oop, oop, oop. We got some wobbly cameras. I apologize, guys. Alright, box three. How do I cut you open? Alright. There we go. Oh. 
put that away before I hurt myself. Ooh, whoop. Oh. Apologies, guys. Alrighty. Is this the back? I don't wanna I don't wanna spoil anything for anyone. Okay, we found the back side. Come on up. Alright, I'm just gonna try and grab a handful. Man, they jam packed those in there. Alright. First handful. Second handful. And the third handful. Whoa. No, we'll come back. We're missing one. Alright. Sorry. Working with city cameras here, I don't want to spoil anything, so I gotta make sure I'm holding the cards just right. We're gonna shift these two boxes over for now. We're gonna shift these guys. Alrighty, so we're gonna start from the back and work our way forward again. Beautiful. Alright, first card for box number two. Tropius from Rising Rivals pre-release stamp. Man, I haven't seen this guy forever. Um, Rising Rivals was kind of a really fun set. Lots of cool cards, lots of nice artwork. It very, it felt very um, throwback to the old sets, in my opinion. Very, very simple style of art, which I love. You know, if you guys get tired of hearing me talk about how much I love simple artwork. Um, <laughs> Yikes, I'm going to try my best not to anymore. Next one, Umbreon, Dark Explorers, Reverse Hollow. Another card that has once again been kind of slowly creeping up. Uh, those uh, Dark Explorer cards. Uh, this one coming in at a 7.5. Very pretty looking card. I'm going to move forward to the next one. Umbreon and Dark Ride GX. This was from the Tag Team Powers Collection. Um, God. Man, I don't know. Just something about this artwork. So pretty. So... I almost said it. I almost said the S word. I almost said simple again. Um, like it's busy, but it's not. And I, th I think that's the thing I enjoy most. Umbreon. 8.5 from Jungle. Love these non-holographics from Jungle. I think they turned out super amazing. Seeing all the bubbles and... Just really getting to focus on the art a lot more. That one came back at a beautiful 8.5. Next one, another Vaporeon. This is from the Sylveon Collection. I think this was another one of those sleeper box sets that at the time people thought it was going to be something and it wasn't, and then eventually they were right. Uh, I think all of these guys are almost in the like six to ten dollar range now, and some of the big hitters like Umbreon and so on being a little bit higher in the 15 20 range. Um, then again, these guys came back in 2013, those came out in 2013. Wow, that's actually a lot longer ago than I realized. Venusaur from Supreme Victors. This one coming in at a beautiful 7. Front's pretty clean. Back looks pretty clean as well. A couple little dippets on the back here. Um, yeah, I can see a little surface, surface gunk on this guy, which would kind of make for that green. Not bad, not bad. Let's move on to our next card. Vileplume coming in from Undaunted Reverse Hollow at an 8. Remember how I said earlier Vileplume is known for that no trainer history? Well, here it is again. Pokebody Allergy Flower. Each player can't play any trainer cards from his or her hand. Um, like I said, I just love giving that ability to Vileplume for some reason. Uh, pardon me, folks. I just get myself a little drink of water. All these cards are getting me uh, a little excited. I'm getting dry mouth here. Okay. Moving on. CGC 8.5 Volcanion EX Secret Rare from Steam Siege. I don't know. There's just something about this card. Just how intense it looks. The gold. The double energy types. Xerneas is just kind of chilling in the background. Like, yeah, what have you been saying about my boy? I'm just kidding. Then again, or am I? No, amazing card, beautiful artwork. Those expanding outside of the borders. Gorgeous. Walrene from EX Hidden Legends coming in at a 9. 
beautiful card. Walrein looks like he's just having a grand old time splashing around. Uh, Crush Draw. Once during your turn, you may reveal the top card of your deck if it has a basic energy attached to one of your Pokemon. If not, put it back on your deck. It's a very interesting uh, ability. Um, don't know if that's really a super powerful Stage 2 ability, but the card itself looks pretty cool. Next up, Xerneas GX. Hey, he was just uh, hanging with our boy uh, Vulcanian. And here he is on his own card, back from Forbidden Light at a near mint 8 full art. Beautiful, beautiful card. That amazing pinkish hue, shatter, textured art in the background. Looks amazing. Really highlights the card and giving him that blue border. <coughs> Next up. Zamazenta V from Sword and Shield. Comes in at 8.5. Very, very nice card. I believe this is our first uh, viewing of Zamazenta was the Sword and Shield base set. Uh, once again, I didn't really start... I wasn't actively playing during the Sword and Shield era, so... Um, <clears throat> I didn't get a chance to see the VMAXs and all that. Uh, never got a chance to use them. But, you know, hey... Maybe once, uh, maybe once we get back to events, I'll maybe get out there again and uh, see if I can't brew up some sort of new evolution build again. CGC 8.5 Zapdos from Majestic Dawn. Beautiful hollow foil card. Um, once again, I've said it before, but I just love lightning effects in any of the Pokemon that they do. They always make it look so good with the foil. Amazing. Sheet Lightning, once during your turn, when you put Zapdos from your hand onto your bench, you may flip a coin. If heads, put one damage counter on each of your opponent's Pokemon. Not overly whelming or overwhelmingly powerful, but cool little ability if you drop them in there. <coughs> Black Kyrim from Plasma Storm. This guy was definitely a big heavy hitter. Um, I know that for a fact. I think he was primarily played in the Ray Eels deck as a nice little one or two of back in that era. Um... You know, ignore me. I don't think it was Ray Eels, or I could just be crazy. Nope, not Ray Eels. I'm thinking a little bit older. Man, uh, Ray Eels was back in the black and white era. I'm thinking about the just the Rayquaza EX build. Hmm. Or was he Keldeo? Comment down below if I'm crazy and I'm just getting all my decks mixed up. We're going to move on, though, before I strain myself. Pikachu from Base Set Unlimited coming in with a beautiful 8. So, I'm sure people know about it, but there were a couple different prints of this card. There was the traditional one with the yellow cheeks that we have here, or there was a red cheek Pikachu that was worth just a little bit more and a little bit more sought after. Um, I believe the red cheeks were definitely the first couple print runs, and then the yellow cheeks came after. Again, I need to check into that. That's one I've always never had my full, accurate information on. <clears throat> Another Pikachu. We have the Build Bear Workshop promo coming in at 5.5. Oof, yeah, hi. Looking at that backside, we can definitely see why it came in at a 5.5. Um, back has a lot more wear along the edges. Front looks pretty good, so I was confused. But man, we flipped that card over and that all made sense real quick. Next card, Pokemon Fan Club. Just like all of you, just like me, here we are. One big happy Pokemon Fan Club. Not going to lie, that onesie is super adorable, and I would be all for that. If they made an adult one of those, I might buy one. Just maybe. Uh, Pokemon Fan Club coming in at a 6 from Flash Fire. Great card, great wholesome artwork. Just super awesome card in general. Coming up next, Professor Sycamore from Storm or Storm Steam Siege, coming in 8.5. Seems like uh, just like myself there a second ago. Professor Sycamore seems pretty frazzled. Uh, chest been hanging on from behind, um, obviously causing some torment to this poor poor professor. I think if I'm gonna say the. I think Chespin came up, surprised him with a hug from behind, and the poor professor just was not ready and dropped all of his paperwork. <clears throat> Next card, Politoed from Neo Discovery. I always imagine the Politoed just kind of vibing on this tree, watching the sunrise. You know, just having himself a good old time in here. 
singing out to the skies, which makes sense because his po Pokemon power is called Frog Song. So, whenever Politoed's attack damages the defending Pokemon after applying weakness and resistance, if there are more than three Poliwags, Poliwurls, Poliwrass, and or Politoed's in play, that attack does 40 more damage no matter how many heads you get. This power stops working while Politoed is asleep, confused, or paralyzed. So, Politoed works better with friends. Makes sense. Coming up next, we have another Politoed. This one comes from Unleashed. Coming in at a 7.0. Its ability is Leapfrog. Once during your turn before you attack, you may choose a water Pokemon on your bench and switch it with your active. That's actually pretty good, especially since he doesn't have to be the active. He doesn't have to be the one promoted. That's a very unique ability. Um, I don't think I've seen too many other Pokemon who will actively switch other Pokemon unless it, it was itself. So that's actually really cool. Moving on. We have Poliwrath, the original evolution to Poliwhirl. His ability is Spiral. As long as Poliwrath is your active Pokemon, your opponent's confused. Pokemon can't retreat, which pretty good since he can make them confused for just two colorless. Comes in at a beautiful 8.5, coming from the EX Fire Red and Leaf Green era. <coughs> Next card coming up, we have a Scissor EX from Breakpoint. Very awesome looking artwork as he just seems to be just flying through the air and shattering his uh, poor, poor victor, whoever that was, or whatever that was. He comes in at a beautiful 8.5, and man, that gold trim on him looks amazing for that detail work. Very, very awesome. Following up after Scissor, we have some Viper coming in at a wonderful 8.5 from EX Power Keepers. <laughs> <clears throat> now, this is what I mentioned earlier with the Reverse Hollows. Um, Power Keepers, you can definitely see the set symbol down there, or the set name. And uh, that's how they, you can tell the Reverse Hollows from the non-Reverse Hollows. Don't know what inspired them to do that with those sets, but it was kind of a cool little shake-up. Coming up next, we have Shaman. Oh my goodness, look at this adorable little guy. Coming from the Mythical Pokemon Collection, this is one of those sets where you would get the pin, the promo, a couple packs, I believe of Generations, once again. Came in at 7.5. Artwork is fantastic. He looks so happy just relaxing on a sunny day. Oh, man. Can't wait till we uh, get that sweet sunshine out here in the Midwest once again. Alrighty. Coming in. Sylveon Black Star promo. Sylveon Collection. Uh, disarming voice for one fairy and 20 damage. Your opponent's active, mount, active Pokemon is now confused. Not too bad. Fairy wind with uh, fairy type and double colorless for 60. Not super powerful, but a adorable artwork. Comes in at a 7. Once again, very, very beautiful card. Moving on to our next card. Sylveon EX from Generations. This one came in at an 8. Um, Eevee, Sylveon, just having fun in this artwork. Again, Radiant Collection blew it out of the park. The artwork was fantastic. The cards looked amazing. I loved all the little banners and pins and charms. Just everything they did with the set was fantastic. And again, it was a sleeper set. So many thought people thought the cards would be worth something. They weren't. Everyone sold out. And now it's all starting to go back up again. Friendly reminder, never sell out too soon. You never know what's going to happen in 5, 10, 15 years. Next up, Sylveon GX from Guardians Rising coming in at 8.5. Um, wonderful looking card. I don't think this was... Oh, no, I, I uh, do apologize. This is a good Sylveon for Magical Ribbon. Let's you search deck for three cards and put them into your hand. Pretty OP. Pretty good, pretty good. Next card, Tapu Lele. So, this card, man, I remember when just the regular Tapu Leles were $50, $60. The full arts were $80, $90. Rainbows were like pushing 100 This card was just insane, all because of that Wonder Tag ability. So, when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench during your turn, you may search your deck for a supporter card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. On top of that, it also had that sweet X-Ball energy attack 
Energy Drive for double colorless. Does 20 damage times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon. Overall, just an incredibly powerful card. And, man, even with the reprints, it held some value for a little while. Trainer's Mail from Ancient Origins, Secret Rare. Came at an 8.5. Super awesome uh, golden artwork style to the traditional card. Very powerful card. Almost end deck played three to four of them. Just insanely good. Moving on to the last stack of box two. Well, technically numbered box three, but I like to go in reverse when we're doing these openings. First card is Jolteon EX, coming in at a beautiful 8.5. Came from the Mega Powers Collection, alternate art. Um, really cool looking card. Overall, not very playable, but still super really cool. Nice collectible piece to any Eevee lover. Next card is Kabutops from Nudio Discovery, coming in at 8.5. Uh, again, this was an era that I just wasn't playing, unfortunately. Um, I love all of the artwork for the cards, so I heavily collected them. But I was a little bit too busy to be able to make it to tournaments and stuff when I was a kid. Next card is another Kabutops, 8.5 from EX Legend Maker. Very, very cool looking card. Um, don't know if I have very much uh, personal experience with this guy. As long as you have Ammonite or Amistar in play, damage done to Kabutops is reduced by 20. That seems pretty good. Man, if it stacks, that'd be insane. If it did stack, it is insane. Next one, Latias, Black Star promo. This was the DVD promo from Pokemon Heroes. Comes in at a 7. Very, very beautiful looking card. Very, very... Non-busy artwork. I'm trying to avoid that simple word again. Moving on. Another Latias. Cosmos Hollow from Heart Gold Soul Silver Era. Gorgeous sunset in the background. Man, that is an amazing artwork. And we got a little swirly down there too. Whew. Oh, and there's a rainbow I just noticed. Man, I feel like the more you look at this card, the more there is that just reveals itself about it. Gorgeous art. Leafeon, the cracked ice hollow from the Psycrusher theme deck. This by far was the bread and butter of my Plasma Evolution deck. Love this card so much. <clears throat> because you could just come out of nowhere and hit someone crazy hard. At the time they had the Energy Evolution Eevee. And what you do is you just slap a grass type on it. Search your deck, you grab out this Leafeon, then now all, all of a sudden, for one energy, you're doing 20 times the number of energies attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. So if they spent the entire game building up their board state and having a bunch of energies loaded up, you just pop one energy onto an Eevee, slam this guy out of now out of nowhere, a couple Deoxys on your bench to give it some buff, and you could easily one-shot almost anything that was playable at the time. Another Leafeon. This is the Leafeon GX, Breath of the Leaves ability. Uh, if this Pokemon is your active, once during your turn, you may heal 50 damage from one of your Pokemon that has energy, any energy attached to it. Overall, not a terrible ability, but I, again, don't think this was a heavily played Pokemon. Uh, came from Ultra Prism, came in at a wonderful 9. Super clean card. That may have not been playable, but collectible. Oh yeah, this artwork is so pretty. Next card, we have the Luxio from Diamond and Pearl. This was for the State, Province, and ter Territory Championships, given out as the um, participation promo. Uh, very, very cool card. I believe this Luxio was played. I could be incorrect on that one. But regardless, really cool. A lot of history to it. 7.5. Nice. And here's the Lux Ray. This was the successor to. This was given out at the National Championships that year for participation. Uh, there are staff versions of both of these cards as well. Um, Gleam Eyes, once during your turn, when you play Lux Ray from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may look at your opponent's hand. If your opponent's Pokemon bench isn't full, choose a basic from your opponent's hand and put it onto their bench. Then switch it with the defending Pokemon. Kind of a mean ability. 
throw something on the board that uh, they didn't want to drop. Bring it up front, and now they don't have a way to get out of it. Oof. Magmar, Black Star promo from the Pokemon League. Very, very nice old card. Um, this card definitely reminds me of my childhood playing an events tournament, getting all these type of really cool promos and, you know, taking them home, putting them in my binder, um, being excited to go to my grandmother's house and show her all my new Pokemon. Um, my grandmother was very, very much into Pokemon and collecting just like myself, and she would always get super excited when uh, I would come and show her new cards. So, good memory with this one. Next up, we have Manaphy from the Black Star promo, XY Mystical Pokemon Collection. Um, Manaphy just looking all sorts of happy, a bunch of love discs hanging around, a couple of Manaphys in the background. Super, super cute. Great artwork. I wish they would do more stuff like this again. Ooh, EX Deoxys pre-release promo Manetric coming in at a wonderful eight. That pre-release Pokeball in that corner there looks gorgeous. Overall, fantastic looking card. Oh, these guys are coming to be a little harder to come by now. So excited to get that one back. Metagross EX from the Mega Metagross EX Premium Collection. Um, another fantastic card came in at a six. Looks like it's got some edge wear around the back and sides, so that would make sense. Overall, very, very nice. Moltres from Fossil. Again, don't know what it is, but Fossil, Jungle, any of those sets. I just love the non-foils more than I do the foils, in my opinion. I think they look so much cooler. The artwork is much more defined. You can really see it. Looks super great. Hmm. Wonderful. <clears throat> Mr. Mime from Jungle coming in at an 8.5. Another beautiful unlimited card. Oh, man. That back looks really clean, too. Super excited. Next card, we have the Alone Ninetales GX from Lost Thunder. This card came in at a beautiful 9.0 grade. Um, just very fantastic artwork. Again... I, I say this so much, but simplicity. Simplicity really lets you focus on the Pokemon itself and not what's going on behind it, what's going on with the artwork. Sometimes it's just nice to focus on the card, the Pokemon, everything about it. Catch all those beautiful details. This guy really knocked it out of the park. And our final card of Box 2 is... Pidgeotto from EX Hole and Phantoms Reverse Hollow coming in at a near mint 8. Um, overall, not too bad. Don't see a lot of issues with it. I think Edge is where we got dinged on this one. Probably centering as well. Looks like there's a uh, top to bottom shift on the back. Overall, very, very fantastic. That one turned out nice. Amazing. All right, we're going to shift these guys out of the way. And we're going to move on to our next box. Okay. So, let's see if we can get this guy open here. All right, which way is which? Don't want to. Oof. All right, that's the back half. I'm gonna grab the middle half. Oh man, they jam pack these guys in there tight. Oh, may have seen one that I didn't want to see, but it's okay. I don't think you guys did. Whoa, did it again. Alright, we're just gonna fling that out of the way. Nice. No, they're backwards because we're looking for the latest sequential numbers. 
And this one ends in 4073, which means that I might have been right the first time. Well, we're going to get into it. First one we have is the Dialga GX. Fantastic card from Forbidden Light, 8.5 on the grade. Nice, beautiful full art. Amazing job on that card. Next we have Ditto. I almost said Pikachu, guys. He almost got me. Almost got me. 7.5, EX Delta Species. Little Ditto is trying to mimic Pikachu. Almost got there, little guy. Almost got there. Gotta try a little harder. And here he is in his original form. Good old Ditto from Legends Awaken coming in at a beautiful 8 in Reverse Hollow. Very nice. Seems like we're all sticking around that 8 area on all of these today. Which I am okay with, you know. Speaking of 8s, we have a Dragonite EX from Evolutions. Wonderful full art. I feel like this card would have popped a lot more if they did his outline in like a blue or a red or something else like i love the gold don't get me wrong but when you uh when you outlined him in yellowish gold and the rest of the card is that color i don't know i think the more contradicting color would have worked a lot better for him but hey you know what do i know a double v we got one of our first v's here from rebel clash yeah the first double we've gotten back Overall, CGC coming in at 9. Looks great. Next up, Eevee and Snorlax coming in at a 9 from Team Up. Man, I want to know the story behind this card because it looks like Eevee is sure startled by something. And uh, I think Snorlax is too. Next card, Entei Black Star Promo, 34. Coming in at a... Fantastic 8. This was a really cool approach. I love that they did this type of foil. Man. They should do this type of foiling more. I think it would be really awesome. Next card is going to be Entei from Secret Wonders Reverse Hollow. Coming in 8.5. Very nice looking card. Artwork was really cool. Love the full moon in the background there. Espeon and Deoxys GX from the Tag Team Powers Collection coming in at a near mint 8. Very cool looking card. Deoxys going all crazy space awesome. And Espeon's like, oh, well then. Espeon probably walked off the other way and said, nah. Next up, Flareon from Jungle Unlimited. Fantastic looking art. Nice. Simple background. Once again, sorry, I said, said simple word. Super cute. Only two feet long. Think about that. These guys aren't super big. They're almost like a little house cat. Two foot eleven, according to its Pokemon stats. Flygon Reverse Hollow from EX Dragon came in at 8.5. Fantastic looking card. Artwork is amazing on it. Next up, Gallade, 8.5, Secret Wonders Hollow. Another really cool card. Not sure if this was heavily played or not at the time, but I want to say he was. Awesome card. Next up, we have the Mega Gardevoir EX from Generations. I continue and continue praising Radiant Collection. They really knocked it out of the park, and they really need to go back to something like that. I know they just did Shining Fates, Hidden Fates, Shining Legends, but man, they got it right with Radiant Collection. Next up is Gengar from Diamond and Pearl Reverse Hollow, 7.5 on the grid. Um, looks like Gengar is kind of just hanging out under the starlit sky, sitting on a tree stump, looking pretty mischievous. Don't know what he has planned, but I'm sure it's not good for someone. Golem Regional Championship Promo from EX Legend Maker. <clears throat> I 
Another fantastic card. Another participation promo that was given out during the regional level events. Once again, I do believe there were staff versions of this card that were given out. Uh, I personally have not come across one yet, but I've always got my eyes open. So hey, if you've got any of those, let me know. I might be interested. Ooh, Greninja Break. I know this guy was played. Coming in 8.5. Kind of cool. Can you imagine if they inverted the labels to make this work for these guys? That'd be interesting. Looks like we got the normal back. I don't know if you know, but sometimes they were inverted incorrectly, where the break would be on this side, but the back would be normal, even though the card looked upside down. Kind of a wonky little issue with a lot of breaks. Well, EX from Dragons Exalted, another fantastic card. That rebirth ability was super good at the time. Um, Hoa was played pretty heavily. Uh, if this Pokemon is your Ninja Discard Poly, you may flip a coin. If heads, put this Pokemon to your bench and attach three different types of energy, basic energy, from your Discard Pile to this Pokemon. Then Rainbow Burn lets you do 20 plus, 20 more for each different type of energy. So you could just come in and 80 someone out of nowhere. Oh, oh, EX is the Randy Orton of the Pokemon world. Incineroar is our next Pokemon. 7.5 grade, Black Star promo. Came from the Incineroar Premium Collection. Pretty cool looking card. Um, one of my favorite characters to play in Super Smash Bros. Uh, he is probably one of my best characters. Bonus points if you get that reference. Uh, yeah, great card overall. Fantastic. So, we're going to move to our next stack here. Stack number two. Juggler from Aquapolis Reverse Hollow 7.5. I love these e-reader cards. They look so amazing. Fantastic. Followed by Agron the X from Primal Clash. Coming in at an 8. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Next card is Articuno from The Power of One. So this is pretty cool. This says that this is the Air Illustrator, which I imagine, if I remember correctly, they incorrectly credited the Illustrator for the card and then later corrected it. Uh, the errors were very, very hard to come by. Um, but yeah, this is actually kind of one of the cool ones. Next one, another one. This one coming in at an 8.5. Very nice. Ah, Excelgor. This was from the state, province, and territory championships back in 2011. Noble Victories. Man, didn't seem like it was that long ago when Noble Victories came out. Crazy how time flies. Edge Slash Regional Championship promo from XY Base Set 2014. Very nice. This comes in at 6.5. Looks like we're getting a healthy restock of all our state and regional and national promos this time around. Blastoise 8.5 from Plasma Blast, that wonderful deluge ability, acting like good old Rain Dance. Fantastic card was great in the Keldeo deck. Mega Blast OCX from Evolutions. Another really, really cool card. Comes in at a beautiful 8.5. I just felt like their HP numbers were a lot thinner than they would traditionally do. I don't know if there was a reason behind that, but I don't know. It just seemed like they went a lot thinner. Next up. Another Mega Blastoise. Now, if we look at this, is exactly what I was talking about. This one's a lot thicker. This one's a lot thinner. I know they're not the same card. They come from two different sets. But I wonder why they went with that thinner style for the HP on those ones. Um, hard to say. If anyone knows, please let me know. Comments down below. Another 8.5 Blastoise. Apparently, Blastoise likes that 8.5 number. Uh, Black Star promo from the Blastoise GX Premium Collection. Very, very cool looking card. Loving it. Bulbasaur from Expedition. 
is Bulbasaur just like yelling up at the sun. Don't know why he's angry, but man, he looks frustrated. Maybe he's lost in the woods. Maybe that's the vibe it's coming out with. I uh, like to make up little stories based off of the artwork of uh, what I think is going on. I'll go with that one. I think he's lost in the woods and he's angry. Team Rocket, first edition, Charmander. Super cool card. I love this artwork. It just felt very, very different. And, um, I don't know, this Charmander's just always been a favorite. Very cool that we got a nice 8 on this first edition one. Next up, we have Created Lily from EX Sandstorm Holographic E Reader Series card. Very, very cool. Um, yeah, I believe this guy was heavily played at the time as well. Pretty good card as long as these are active, they can't retreat. And you could keep pulling up different Pokemon and poisoning them with his first attack. Kind of shenanigans. Dark Alakazam from Team Rocket coming in at a 6. Um, fantastic looking card. I believe this was um, free to the whole Pokemon lawsuit that they had to deal with the with the famous Psychic who um, won the lawsuit saying that Kadabra was based off of him and so they had to discontinue the cards. Kind of a weird story on that one. If you want to read up more on that, you should look into it. It's kind of interesting. Uh, I do know that the uh, Psychic actually recently gave Pokemon the permission to start printing Kadabra again. So, probably won't be too much longer until we start seeing him back in the card game, which is really exciting. Dark Earth Ring from Neo Destiny coming in at an 8. Super cool looking card. Earth Ring just always felt like one of those super crazy, I'm going to wreck you Pokemon. So a dark version is like 10 times as scary in my opinion. And we're going to move on to the final pile of box 3. I'm going to kind of zip through these a little bit quicker. Because we still have a whole other box to go through, guys. No, bear with me, this was a big one. Pokemon Reversal 7.5 from Expedition in Reverse Hollow. Another fantastic e-reader card. Love, love, love those series so much. Next up we have Strength Charm in the 5.5. Another Expedition Reverse Hollow. Looks super great. Tuck that over there for now. Copycat from Expedition. Coming back at a 6. Loving all the costumes. wonder if anyone has cosplayed Copycat at a convention. That's like your whole weekend planned right there. All the different costumes you could be doing. Dual Ball from Expedition Reverse Hollow. Fantastic looking card. I loved the foil from those sets. Energy Search at Expedition coming in at a 5. That's looking pretty good too. Warp Energy. Oh, I just feel like the energies from the Aquapolis era and Expedition era always looks so good on that e-reader style. Comes in at a wonderful 8. Very nice condition card. Looks pretty good all around. I definitely see some edge wear on this side, so the 8 makes sense to me. 6.5 on the warp point. Another fantastic. See a little bit of a bubble there. Something kind of wonky going on. Not too bad overall. 8.5 on the reverse hollow metal energy from Aquapolis. Very, very nice. That's looking real good. Darkness Energy coming in at a 6. A little bit lower than his uh, counterpart there, but still, we love him nonetheless. Makes sense. I see a lot of uh, fogginess on this card. These guys were known for fogging. But, that's part of the history of the cards. Boost Energy at a 7.5. Not seeing the fogginess. But still looks just as good. Fantastic. Super Energy Removal. Number 2. 4.5. Totally understandable. He's got all sorts of little goofies on him. This guy saw some love and some adventures. And our final box. Final box. Huh. Our final card of box 3. Energy Switch from Aquapolis Reverse Hollow. Fantastic looking card. Amazing. I love it.
Awesome. 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 All right, we're going to shift some things over again. Because, goodness, do I have a pile of cards here. All right, everyone. Final box. So, let's get to it. And she is open. Let me take a look and see what we got today. All right. Um, the back half of the cards. Oh, oh. No one look. No one look. No spoilers. And we're going to move this up here. Okay, so box number three. Let's get into our first card here. Alex Sam from Base Set Unlimited 5.5. Not too bad. Looking pretty good. We talked about his history with Kadabra earlier. Next card. Chansey 5.5. Base Set Unlimited. Looking pretty good. A couple scuffs on the foiling, but, you know, with these old cards, that tends to happen. These cards were taken on playgrounds, taken in pockets, traded amongst kids. I mean, these old cards saw somewhere in love, and that's part of the story for them. Moving on to our next card, we have a Gengar 6.5 from Fossil Unlimited. Another fantastic-looking card. Um, don't think he was very heavily played back in the day, but still just super cool. Looks very mischievous. He has a mill intent on him. Next card, Hitmonchan Base Set Unlimited 7.5. Very fantastic looking card as well. Love the simplicity on this card. The artwork was fantastic. And these things always look so beautiful when that foil was fresh. Next card is another Hitmonchan. Same 7.5. So we got two of those guys today. That's exciting. Moving to the next card. Nido King from Base Set. Coming in at an 8. It's looking pretty good. Not too bad. Looks like a little bit of an upshift to him. Probably explains why he got the 8. 5.5. Excellent. Plus. Not too bad. Similar upshift. I wonder if that was just a problem on these Nido Kings. Here's another one. We can check it out. And he, not as bad. His Sun Ring seems a lot better in comparison to the other two. A little bit more dings on the sides, but overall, looking pretty good. Moving on from the Nido Kings, we have Nine Tails from the base set coming in at a six. Very fantastic looking card. A couple scratches on the surface of the card, but nice little fillers for those base set collections. Nine tails out of seven coming in now. This one looks a lot nicer. It's a little bit of a ding down there, but that's not too terrible. Centering looks really, really nice on the card. A little bit of edgeware on the back. It's a fantastic piece. And last card for this first stack is Polyrath coming in at a seven. Centering on the card looks pretty good. Maybe a slight upshift when it comes to the back. Some edge wear around the sides, but not terrible at all. Moving on to the second pile. Here we go. And of course, we're going to start off with the Polyrath 7.5. Fantastic card. Got a 6.5 Polyrath. Sorry, so if you guys are trying to complete a full set from CGC, going by 0.5 grades, we got you covered. We got a 6.5, we got a 7, we got a 7.5. Could this be an 8? Nope, it's a Voltorb. It's a 9.5 from Hidden Fates. So close from that pristine 10. Fantastic foiling on these Hidden Fates promos, though. 
loving them. Coming in with Wimpod next from the Hidden Fates, coming in at a nine. Very nice. Dark Arbok first edition. Bit of a thick stamp on this guy. 7.5. Looking very nice. I didn't note the thick stamp, so I wonder if that's something they don't really pay much attention to unless you mark it as an error. But still really cool. There's always the thick stamp, the gray stamp, a bunch of different variations. Aerodactyl from Fossil coming in at a 4.5. Not too bad. Looking pretty good here. Next one. Another Aerodactyl, but this one's a 7.5. Hollow looks a lot better on this guy. Looks a lot cleaner. Just something about that clean holograph from those early sets just looks amazing. Dark Magneton. I mentioned this before. Still holds true. One of my favorite foils in the game. Always looks so fantastic. Beautiful card. Ooh, this one almost threw me off. We got a Parallel City staff promo. <laughs> Super cool. Got the staff stamp over here coming in at 7. Looks great. Another staff promo of Parallel City comes in at 6.5. Super cool. Third one at a 6.5. Very nice. We have a fourth one. We do have a fourth one. So we have a 7, 6, 5, a 6, 5, and a 6. Got your full playset here for whoever needs them. Oh, maybe I'll have a playset of 6, 5s actually. Got another one. And Pichu from Heart Gold Soul Silver Prelease promo. Super cool looking card, amazing looking foil. Love that Heart Gold Soul Silver logo too. They did a great job on that. And another one, this one came in an 8.5 though, a lot nicer condition. Uh, looks like we got a bit of a uh, upshift here on it, but overall not too terrible. And we're going to go ahead and move on to our final stack of cards today, folks. First card we have is Pichu from Platinum. Well, Platinum Burger King promo, actually. Comes in an 8. Next one, another one. Fantastic looking card. Pichu looks like he's had a rough day. He might have fell over. He's a little bit ditzy. Flagon from Rising Rivals Hollow. 7.5. Fantastic looking card. Man. I'm telling you, those simple foil patterns. Mm. Mantike. I had to think about that name for a second. This is a card that doesn't come up, I think, too often. Um, in fact, I believe this is the only printing of Mantike in the Pokemon universe at the moment. So, these guys have been super sought after because of that lately. Mew from the Mythical Pokemon Collection. Fantastic. Mew's just enjoying a sunny, beautiful day. Rainbow's out, picking flowers. He's having a great time. Gold Border Meowth. So these actually came in the Pokemon Fruit Rolls a long time ago, back when I was a kid. Super cool looking card. I think this is the only time they've done the gold board or something like that. Not in the sense of like a secret rare, but you know. Vaporeon from Jungle coming in at a 6. Very, very fantastic looking card. Amazing. Hang in there guys, we're almost near the end. Pidgeot, 7-5 from EX Fire Red, Leaf Green. Amazing card, great ability, quick search once per turn. Search your deck for any card, snag it, add it to your hand. Help you help let you build up multiple Pidgeots on your bench, and then by the time you got two of them out every turn, just search your deck for any two cards. It was insane. And now when I say that, I'm kidding, because I remember that you can't use more than one quick search ability per turn. I'm sure the comment section is going to be hitting me on that one. Pile of Swine from Stormfront, pre-release promo. Just out enjoying this nice sunny day, chilling on the grass. Probably use a haircut though, buddy. Raiko EX from Dark Explorers coming in 7.5. Once again, say it every time, but lightning effects in Pokemon, they go the extra mile 100% of the time. 
fantastic. Next card, Gyarados Ancient Origins pre-release promo. These cards were super cool, but the confusion between these and the Reverse Hollows was insane. They pretty much looked the same, except for the fact that the name would be Hollow. I feel like they should have done a little bit more for them, but hey, that's what we got. And we got another one coming in at a 7 this time. Fantastic card. Great artwork. Gyarados always looks so awesome. Uh, Crosshatch Hollow City Championship Eevee coming in at 8. Fantastic looking card. Crosshatch promo is fantastic as well. Got another one. Another 8. Looks fantastic. Oop, got an 8.5 on this one. Are we going to be creeping up? Is the next one a 9? Nope, it's a Metal Energy from Expedition. That was out of left field. Coming in an 8, Reverse Hollow. Beautiful looking card. Darkness Energy, coming in also at an 8. So if you need an 8 Metal Energy and an 8 Darkness Energy, we got you covered. Super Scoop Up at 7.5. Expedition. Beautiful e-reader series. And the final card of today, folks. Warp Point. 7.5. Awesome, awesome card from Expedition. Fantastic. And just a friendly reminder to everyone, all of these cards and so many cooler ones can be found on our website, Collector's Edition 101. Dot com or ce-101.com and feel free to check out all of our cool graded cards, event merchandise, sealed products, and if you use the code WELCOME at checkout, you're going to get 10% off your total purchase. So thank you again for joining us today at Collector's Edition 101. Class dismissed.